Are you ready for a reboot? Welcome to the Sheila Mack Show, reality at its finest. History reminds us those hit hardest often become the change makers. This year, we've all hit crazy economic, social, and emotional rock bottoms. We all get knocked down. Something hits globally, locally, personally. It affects our health, finances, our relationships. We have to recreate a business or career. Each show, Sheila and her special guest will be sharing their reboot stories, guiding you with real solutions to upgrade and up-level emotionally, mentally, physically, spiritually, and financially. Here on NBC's KCAA Radio. If you're ready to pull yourself up by the bootstraps and bra straps, enjoy a listen. Here's Sheila. Welcome to the Sheila Mack Show, reality at its finest. Here we have real people sharing real stories and actionable steps to help you reinvent, rebuild, and reboot your business and personal life on your terms. I'm your host, Sheila Mack, and this week's show is all about economic pivots unveiled, analyzing the forks in our road and how to navigate both in business as well as with a special section on how to navigate real estate investing and sales during our changing market. Today, for the first half of the show, I would like to introduce again my friend who is collaborating with me on this business and real estate strategy hour. Today's focus again is economic pivots unveiled analyzing the forks in our road and how to navigate both in business and a special section later by yours truly on real estate during a changing market. What road are you on and what road do you need to be on to survive these times with inflation and rising interest rates? That's what we're going to talk about today. So stay tuned for real estate investment tips on the second half of the show where I shall share about ways to take the road less traveled and start enjoying investing in properties for profits, even with inflation and interest rates going up. Now I'd like to welcome back. John C. Morley, a serial entrepreneur. He is an engineer, marketing specialist, talk show host, member of the U.S. Press Agency, a writer, video producer, and president of his local chamber of commerce, truly a serial entrepreneur. John has inspired children and adults of all ages to find their passions through his personality and knowledge. He gets people excited to learn about themselves, others, and of course, he also works with science. You can quickly check some of the past experiments he has conducted by going to his YouTube and typing Science Fridays with John or visiting BelieveMeAchieve.com to see many of his other fabulous creations. John knows that not everyone learns in the same way. Thus, he prides himself on being dynamic and exciting and teaching from auditory, visual, and kinesthetic perspectives. Thank you again for sharing your wisdom on the show, um, John. And without further ado, here is John. Well, thank you, Sheila, again for another warm welcome. It, it's great to be back with you again on your show. And of course, you know, I have another amazing topic to share with you. And of course, all the uh, wonderful people that are either listening to us today or uh, listening again on a podcast or watching us uh, through the uh, video version. So you're going to notice what I have in my hand, but I'm going to tell you because I know some of you that can't see what I have in my hand. It's actually a garden faucet and it is what we call a garden Y faucet valve. Why? Well, really simply. If uh, you can't see the screen, basically it's a faucet that you screw onto where your garden hose would go. And then there is like a V or we call it a Y. And so there are two valves, one on each side. And if you take one and turn it toward the center, which it will open. If you do that to the other side, the other side will open. Now on this type of a valve, you can actually open two valves at one time. So the input is actually our water and it can either go to the left or it can go to the right or it can go to both. Now in life, our input is our challenge and our choice would either be A or B respectively. In life, we have to make a choice. So we need to understand the whys of life and how to choose a path. Not always an easy thing, and it can be very daunting for some people where they'll either just not choose and be stuck 
in place. Now, whys of life are a great thing. They allow us to analyze the situation and make a choice. So understanding and recognizing whys in our life is a requirement for success. You know, no great inventor ever just pops something out just because, you know, they, they decide to go one way. You know, they had to have this choice. And when choice comes up, people get nervous, like, oh my gosh, what do I do? You know, and you're, yourself, when you go into a store and they give you two choices, you usually can make the choice pretty quickly. If they give you too many choices, whether this be um, a home or uh, something in the store, and you have to pick from too many, like, oh my gosh, like there's just too many options. Or you go to a candy confectioner and they have like 200 different types of chocolate. And you're like, I just want a simple piece of dark chocolate. And so understanding and recognizing whys in our life is extremely critical. What are the ramifications if I choose path A or go to the left or path B and go to the right? There's always a cause and effect. Now with our little faucet here, if I keep both of them closed and I have the water turned on at the main valve, the water will just basically sit in here, pushed against it with pressure and nothing will come out. And if the valve is a decent valve, which this is a pretty decent valve, if you buy a valve for two or $3, it's not going to hold the water pretty well. I definitely recommend if you're going to buy a Y valve for gardening uh, that you get one that's brass so that um, it's going to be able to withstand the pressure from your faucet. Now, when you go ahead and you open one of these valves, the pressure is released and the water will come out one side. If I open the other valve, the pressure from this side will actually be slightly reduced and now the water will come out from both sides. So let's talk about cause and effect. If I let's say, study for my test, right? The effect is I'm going to do very well on it. If I need to make a presentation in my office and I decide that I'm still living the college life and that I'm going to be partying because I'm still under that, let's say, mentality, and I believe that every night's a party night and I don't get to sleep at a reasonable hour, the next morning, the effect is going to be me being extremely tired, looking very unprofessional, and the prospect being like, if he or she can't manage their own life, how are they ever going to manage our campaign or manage our business? So the question comes, recognizing a cause and effect, and that is, how do we weigh the pros and the cons? Well, we can't just go get a scale and put our, let's say, intangible pros and cons on a scale. There isn't a way to weigh that. If we were trying to weigh whether I have uh, 12 ounces of gold versus six ounces of silver, which would be heavier, right? So we could weigh that. Well, one of the greatest inventors of our time, you may know of him, Benjamin Franklin. He developed many things, including the lightning rod, as well as bifocals. And in 1956, Benjamin Franklin did it. He came up with a way to help people understand whether they should choose this path or take this path. All the times when, uh, you know, when you're in the forest, and uh, there are two paths and you go left or you go right. I always say that we want to take the path that's least followed. When you're in the forest, you want to take the path that's the most followed because that's the one that's going to get you back home and that's the one that's not going to get you lost. But in real life, we want to choose the path that is the least followed. Why? Because we want to be an innovator. We want to be different. We want to be something that other people recognize as a leader, as an expert in our field. So Benjamin Franklin in 1956 came up with the Benjamin Franklin decision-making method. Now to do it is really simple. All you do is take a piece of uh, paper and you could take a pen or a pencil, doesn't matter which, and you're just going to draw a line down the center of the paper. So you're going to hold the paper so that it's uh, in the eight and a half by 11 format, the portrait format, not the uh, other format, 11 by um, uh, eight and a half. You're going to do eight and a half by 11, which is the way it would be portrait. And you would draw a line from the top of the paper in the center all the way down. And then you would draw a line from the top left to the top right. And you'd leave a little bit of room so you could write the headings. On the first side, you can just put plus. 
On the other side, you could put minus. Really, the plus is the pros. The minus is the cons. So let's say you were trying to make a decision on whether you should do something or not do something in your company or a relationship. On the left side, you would list everything that would be positive about making that decision in favor of either staying with that relationship or buying something for the company, okay? And you'd go down and you'd list them all. On the right-hand side, you would actually list all the negatives, the drawbacks. Now, something very interesting about this is that this decision-making method is not just good for you to help you in business make decisions or help you in your personal life make decisions. You know what it's also good for? That's right. It can be an uh, invaluable sales tool with prospects. So let's say you're meeting with someone and you've gone through... Uh, you know, the needs assessment, and you're trying to help them discover whether they should move forward or not making the decision to go forward. But we know a lot of times that if we tell them something, they're not going to buy into it. And they're going to realize that because it didn't come out of their mouth, probably not something that they want to do. So by using the Benjamin Franklin decision making method, here's what I do. Uh, let's say the prospect's name is uh, Joe. Joe, um, I know uh, right now we're in a little bit of a challenge trying to figure out whether this makes sense or not, correct? Exactly. Well, do you remember uh, Benjamin Franklin? Oh, sure I do. Well, Benjamin Franklin was one of the greatest inventors of all time. And he actually invented the lightning rod and he also invented um, the, uh, the concept for bifocals. And in 1956, he was uh, challenged with making a decision. And he came up with the Benjamin Franklin decision-making method. So I'd like to use it right now, if that'd be okay with you. Can I get a piece of blank paper? Sure, or you could pull one right out of your, I have one actually right here. I can pull it right out of my binder. And what he said to do, is basically just draw a line down here. And so what I do is, let's say there's a decision about him moving forward with getting this uh, new piece of uh, machinery. For his plan and i'll just come down here and, I, and i'll write down uh, uh he'll, he'll he'll do the writing but i'll basically tell you okay so the one thing is it's going to do is it's going to increase your productivity right uh, it's going to increase your staff's uh morale it's going to increase your client retention okay uh it is another thing it's going to do is it is going to uh increase um the flexibility you'll have on delivery times, but you're going to be able to deliver things a lot faster than you could before, okay? And it's also going to increase not only the efficiency of production, but it's going to increase the efficiency of the uh, power that you use to run it. Another thing that it's going to do is this machine is going to be able to be upgraded, not just today, not just tomorrow, but 10, 20, 30, 40 years from now, we'll be able to change modules on it, upgrade software, and it'll be like you've had almost like a new machine. When we come up with a new type of functionality, we add a module, we add the software, and suddenly that machine has just um, grown in value for your company. So you spend about five or 10 minutes going through all these things, great. And the next thing you could say is there will be um, the ability to have, uh, your saved profiles. So someone that's not knowledgeable about how to run the machine could actually run a job. Once one of the other staff members that's knowledgeable puts that in, or you put that in the system. So you go through all these, maybe you go through about 10 or 12 and you just keep going through and you keep going through and you might say something like, you know, and this machine will also give us, uh, the ability to have increased gradients. And I'm just giving you some examples. Another thing that this machine is going to help us to do is it's going to increase your safety in the plant. And that's going to happen because the system has about 12 different safety features, meaning this machine will not operate if any one of those safeties are violated. He's kind of just listening. And so he's writing down, you're telling him, okay. And uh, another thing that this machine is going to do for your plant is it's going to increase the savings uh, that you'll have, not only from profits, but by the fact that you won't have to pay those hefty uh, bills for um, contamination to um, the outside world because this machine actually has a 0. 0.00001 carbon footprint. And that will give you a reduction on your additional charges from power, not just the power usage, but on your carbon footprint power, which I know you being in the production industry, 
and definitely appreciate that. So I've gone through this with him about 10 or 15 minutes. And I've kind of helped him come up exactly with, you know, all the pros. And that's what you do. And then you can either write them out for yourself. A lot of times I'll write them out myself. And then I'll do all that for him. And then I'll, I'm like, okay, so this is the con side. And uh, here's pen. And I'll let you fill that out. And you shut up. And what you're going to find is you made it very easy for him or her to see you got 15, 20 different pluses on the left. And you don't say anything about the cons or the negatives. And they may write one or two. And you might sit there for 15, 20, or 30 minutes and don't say a word. And they may come back and say, um, I can't think of any more. Well, it looks like you've made your decision, just like the great inventor, Mr. Uh, Benjamin Franklin, um, making the choice to go forward with the mach this machine definitely is what you've decided. So when did you want to take delivery of the machine? Next Wednesday, or shall we bring it to you on Friday? And did you want to go with the double uh, capacity, or did you want to take the single right now? So once someone has done this, now what a lot of salespeople do is they'll try to help with the cons. Don't do that, because now you might get close to the pros, and it's going to be a very hard case to win. So understanding, I call it the whys of life. Okay. And again, this is why I have this prop, this little valve, this brass valve, uh, which if you're watching us, you can see it. But if you're hearing us, it's just a uh, Y valve. And on the bottom, uh, it has a little, uh, or the top, I should say, if I flip it over, it has a, a, a little ring, a plastic ring with a, a washer inside and then it has the two little nubs for on and off and when you push the valves toward the center you basically open the port inside and water can flow now i know a lot of people whether they're entrepreneurs serial entrepreneurs or whether they're um just single business owners or maybe people that just work for companies and they get challenged every day with a why maybe the customer comes to them and says you know I'm on the fence as to whether I should go this way or that way. Or maybe you're on the fence of whether I should choose staying with the same supplier or switch to someone else. Wise are not hard, but when we don't make the choice to embrace them, they will disempower us instead of empowering us. Now, how do they empower us? Well, one thing I use in the Benjamin Franklin decision-making method is an awesome way to make your decision of wise. When you look at it from that perspective, and you also know that if you make the decision, and let's say you make the wrong decision today, you could down the road, you go to make another decision and be like, I remember what happened last time I did that. I'm definitely not doing that anymore. That was a very expensive lesson or that kept us down for almost a day and a half. We are not doing that again. So a why is a good thing. So if you've ever uh, been a forest or know someone in a forest, I'm also an Eagle Scout, very grateful to be an Eagle Scout, is that um, we would be in the forest or on the campground and sometimes it would get late. And even though we'd have a flashlight, we would take one turn. But as we take that turn, we come around again. And we're back to this decision of, do we go left or do we go right? So we make our decision, but we're back again. And we're not really sure if we went further or if there are just so many trees in this forest. So we decide to set a marker, tie a ribbon around the tree, which is a lot of times what we did. Um, or we could make a a mark of the tree by taking our um, our uh, let's say our our knife that we had as as scouts and we had a totem chip which allowed us to use that knife and we might just make a little mark in the tree and if we come around again like oh you know what we were here before I knew we were here before so now instead of going right we go left and suddenly we're on a different path I'm just about on the way home so I don't want wise to scare you but I do want you to make the choice to embrace them and know that a why could be the deciding factor of whether you now are on the path for success. A lot of times I talk with um, students and they're on the fence of, do I take this internship? Do I not take this internship? So what I do with them is I take out the Benjamin Franklin decision-making method. I was like, uh, Steve, um, do you remember Benjamin Franklin? Uh, yeah, one of our greatest inventors of our time. Exactly. He invented bifocals. He invented the lightning rod, which you may be familiar with, and some other things as well. The Franklin stove. And I know how important important it is for you to get the right internship so that you can learn and grow in potentially your career. But I know you're on the fence right now, and I don't want to push you one way or the other. I want to help you make that decision yourself. How's that sound? That sounds cool. How do we do that? Well, I'm going to get a blank piece of paper, 
And I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to draw a line down the center. And I'm going to draw a line from the left to the right. And I'm going to write a plus and write a minus. And I do the same thing with that. It's like, okay, so uh, what's the plus of taking this intro? Well, one thing, it's uh, it's flexible time. You're going to learn. Uh, you're going to make uh, new friends. Uh, you are going to be able to practice uh, skills. You're going to have the ability to be creative. You're going to be able to... Uh, improve your communication skills. You are going to be able to uh, network with other great people in the industry. Um, you get free lunch every time. <laughs> you get the idea. And then I was like, okay, here's the mice. Here's a pen for you. And I just want you to write down the right, all the reasons why this wouldn't be a good idea. And you sit there. And a lot of times I'll sit there for five or 10 minutes and like, uh, I don't, know of any reason why I shouldn't take it. Sounds like you've already made your decision. So with that being in mind, what do you say we set up a second interview and see if you're a good fit for this position? And nine of the time, they're like, yeah, let's go do that. I think the Benjamin Franklin decision-making method is an amazing tool because you can use it to your advantage with prospects, with employees, with contractors, with people that you want to get involved. And the key with making decisions is you don't want to make the decision for them. You want them to come up with the idea that it was from their own mind. Even though you kind of put that thought in their head, they're going to see it as their own idea because, hey, they couldn't come up with a minus. Now, just like we have this uh, Y valve. And as I said to you, water can flow through this valve in either no directions, one direction, or two direct. But it has more possibilities. So you have, you have no directions. That's possibility one. You have the left direction, right? That's possibility um, a number two. Possible number three is the right valve, okay? Possible number four is the both valves are on. In our life, we make decisions based on our perceptions. Remember I've said before, perceptions are not reality. Your perceptions, though, are how you see the world and how you're going to choose to respond or not respond. So I don't care whether you're in the car and you have to make a decision of whether to go to the left or go to the right, or you're at a crossroads in your career and have to decide, do I stay or do I leave to get something else? Maybe it's a decision of, do I stay in this relationship or do I get out and look for something else? Or do I take more education? Do I go back to school to get another degree or do I stay with what I have right now? Do I spend this money right now on a new car? Do I spend this money on something else? Do I lease my car? Do I buy my car? And I could give you hundreds and hundreds of different things. But when we start to weigh the factors using the Benjamin Franklin decision-making method, it became very simple to me that the choice was already made. Now you might say, John, I don't know if I could do this. It's very simple, very simple. And the more that you practice using the Benjamin Franklin decision-making method, the more it will become a tool that you keep on your proverbial tool pal. And you'll feel free to share it with other people. Now I wanna share something with you. You will use the tool more. But when I started to embrace it more, it wasn't when I started using it more. It's when I made the decision to teach it to other people. Because then I not only learned once, I learned twice by teaching it. When you teach it to someone, ask them to teach it to someone else. And I guarantee you, this tool is going to be one of the best things you ever share with them. Now, I want to definitely uh, invite you to check out my latest article. And I want to just give you guys a call to action, if I may. You'll notice a QR code at the top right of the screen. If you uh, don't see the QR code and you're listening to us, well, go to BelieveMeAchieve.com. That is BelieveMeAchieve.com. And uh, you can check that out because there are a lot of amazing things there, including my most recent article that I just published. And that article is entitled, Smoking Took My Grandfather's Life When I Turned Nine and is vaping, you heard me, is vaping safe. I talk about the technology of vaping, and then I talk about how many um, hospitals are actually now starting to tell people that it's not safe. That's right, it's not safe, ladies and gentlemen, but they say it's safer than smoking. It's still gonna harm you. And in the picture that I put together, which is really ingenious, um, I have a person 
vaping and blowing out the smoke, the little plus sign and kids. And then I have an equal sign going down to a picture of bad lungs, coughing, confusion, and yes, ladies and gentlemen, death. Did you know that one in 20 Americans vape and teenage e-cigarette consumption has increased by 1,800% over the last year? And 14.1%, that's 2.14 million of high school students, and 3.3%, 380,000 of middle school students reported current e-cigarette usage. And these stats come to us courtesy of Cross River Therapy. So ladies and gentlemen, definitely check out all this stuff. It was, of course, a blast being with you. Check out BelieveMeAchieve.com. Be sure to register for my latest JC McAdley Masterclass. There's so much great content. And I know, ladies and gentlemen, once you decide to make the Benjamin Franklin decision-making method part of your daily life, you'll embrace the whys and all the crossroads in your life because you know what? They actually will help us become better versions of ourselves. I am John C. Morley, serial entrepreneur. Please reach out to me at BelieveMeAchieve.com. And if you have questions, uh, you need coaching or anything or want to improve your skills, I'm here to help you in a variety of ways. So check out BelieveMeAchieve.com. Let me know what you think of some of the articles, or is there an article you want me to write something about? I'll be happy to do that. I've written over 7 million words in just the last few months. I'm John C. Morley, serial entrepreneur. It has been a pleasure being with you, Sheila, and I cannot wait to be on the next show. Yes, that's going to be next week, which is going to be August 18th. Where is this month going? I mean, it, it's insane how we just started August last week and the month is like halfway over. And the last thing I want to tell you is this. Don't let other people scare you from whys and decisions by telling you, do this. You won't have to make a decision. That's not living a life of purpose. That's living someone else's life. Have yourself an amazing rest of your day and week. And check out BelieveMeAchieve.com. I can help you with anything you need, including coaching, uh, press releases, and a variety of other things. So check things out, and I will see you guys next week with another amazing topic. Until then, remember, don't cry about the why. <laughs> Let's start embracing them and use the Ben Franklin decision-making method. Thank you again, John, for sharing your wisdom on the show. Go to jcmacacademy.eventbrite.com. And there you will be able to see all that John is offering. Now, as Tony Robbins, one of my favorite mentors says, decision is where our destiny is made. So I feel like that is so important to remember that we do, our decisions today are going to affect us for the next decade at least. And during a shifting market, both in real estate and with our inflation and economy going crazy right now. I mean, like I just went and got groceries and it was like $300 and I didn't even buy anything. So, <laughs> so really making the right decisions at the right time can make all the difference. Let's get into navigating economic crossroads exploring the whys, the values, and the forks in our road when it comes to real estate and property for profit. So if you are sitting on some property right now, you might be thinking, is now the time to sell? And if your property is in a good position and you have cash flow coming in, if you have an investment property, now is not probably not the best time to sell, but it is the best time for this season because things are going to continue to shift for a while. We're at the beginning stages. It may be that you are in a good position and you have equity in your home or you have some rental properties and it may be a great time to get out what's called a home equity line of credit, a revolving line of credit on your properties so that when the deals do show up to buy, you're able to take advantage of that situation using cash. Cash is going to be king or queen, as I say. And so that's a big difference. But now you may be in a different situation where you're looking to buy your first home or you're looking to invest in maybe a vacation home. Uh, it may be a point in your life where you're looking to 
looking at the possibility of relocating or downsizing because you have a very big home that's mostly paid off or, you know, you're in a good equity position, yet you don't really want to maintain that home. You want to travel, you want to have fun, you want to visit maybe grandchildren or children that are now grown and on their own. And so there's different stages in your life where your home, your property investments, whether that's just your home or you're creating passive income is going to make all the difference. And so that's where working with a qualified agent that has experience as an investor, as well as just an agent is going to make all the difference for you. Uh, I do work with people in every state in the United States. Uh, my main office is uh, with Keller in Beverly Hills, and I also work quite a bit with relocation. I have a group of hand-selected, hand-picked agents that are top in their field that I work with. So when you work with me and I refer you out to an agent in your city or state or the city and state you want to buy into, then I am still holding your hand and making sure that that every step of the way that you're getting assistance from me and the agent I've referred you to in order to help you to make that best decision for your particular circumstances. So that's really important and something that you want to consider if you're going to buy. Now, I don't do I don't, <laughs> I'm not involved in the investment side of things with stock market or, or managing money that way, because that's not my expertise. And so you don't want to go to somebody who's selling those options, who's never invested in that market. And I feel like it's really important to also, if you're going to select a real estate agent to represent you and help you to negotiate in your buy or make sure you get the best price in your sell, then you want somebody that actually owns property and has invested in property and has experience as an investor and is considering all your needs and and the market and knows the market in general. So right now, if you didn't realize <laughs> and you're just tuning in and you're wondering, okay, I'm an entrepreneur, maybe you're an entrepreneur too. And one of the things that is really nice to have is that backup passive income. So the first tip I'd like to give you in this or any market, anytime, it's always a good time to make sure if you are an entrepreneur or maybe you are somebody that works for a company and you're starting a side business, a side gig, the new term, that's okay too. Go ahead, do an S Corp, do an LLC, make your company a real entity. Go ahead and sign up with the Dun and Bradstreet, get your Dun and Bradstreet number, start building your business credit. And that is going to make a big difference. How you structure your small business that may become your big business is huge. So if you are listening in from that perspective, I personally bought all my properties. I started investing for my gift stores and I used my business credit as a big tool Imagine I started when I was 23 years young, so not a lot of people were going to give me credit as a person, but they gave my S Corp at the time lots of credit, access to cash. I had uh, started with very small 30-day net 30s for my store, went up to net 120 and beyond, built my credit so well. I bought my vehicles that I used for my store to buy to bring things in. All of those, I had the lowest interest rates. Usually your business will get you, a business credit will get you a lower rate than a personal credit, believe it or not. <laughs> and even for the properties, I was able to get funding to put down on my first store that I actually purchased. So the first first store, I was 23 years young. I negotiated this lease, six months free rent. Then it was $5,000 a month. And that was a lot of money. So I had to like figure out how do I market this business? How do I make money to pay this rent and actually have extra money to live and build? And marketing, no matter what business you are in, you are in the business of marketing. So marketing is really important. I interviewed quite a few marketing companies. And I found 
really a, one lady that <laughs> obviously she's retired now uh, that was great because I wanted her to teach me. I wanted to understand what she was doing. I was more like an apprentice student um, and I wanted to learn how to do this stuff on my own because my budget was so low that I couldn't even afford to hardly pay her at, with this big rent coming due. And, and I learned, and then I kept her on and she did my, my major marketing campaigns quarterly. And I continued the process in between. She taught me about cross collaboration and how to work with various businesses and collaborate in order to have them pay for part of the ads. So then my advertising spend money went down and my business went up. I quickly was able to save up enough money between that and some business credit to go ahead and buy my next building and the other. So a total of four uh, buildings that I was able to purchase through the stores and pay them off all with the business credit and proper marketing. Now, if you love cross collaboration and marketing, <laughs> I have a great video. It is in the archives on my YouTube channel at Sheila Mack Show. And there you can see the interview I have with the billion dollar marketing genius, Jay Abraham. And that is still available. That was actually a two part series. And he also reshared that on his YouTube. So if you look for how to stand out in your industry um, under the Jay Abraham uh, YouTube, the interview is also there. So that is something, if that interests you, that you may want to take a look at no matter what industry. And I'm telling you, if you are a mom at home with, with a lot of children, you're still marketing. Like, how do I get these kids to help me clean up? How do I get them to do what they need to do? And I, as a mom, I actually raised um, six children. I fostered three to adopt, three of my own. So this big family and running businesses that got me into real estate uh, and coaching. Before I even knew I was coaching, I was coaching, which was really interesting because I was so young when I started. But that I had to be very systematized, very organized. And that's a, a huge point uh, that we talk about a lot in, in real estate and that industry is block scheduling, scheduling and planning. And during a market shift or when things are changing the way they are right now, we have a lot of chaos going on and there's, there's freedom in form. So the more chaos that you're experiencing with your finances <laughs> due to inflation or with your life, any kind of a life shift, uh, that's where you have to be even more organized and plan things out. The more you can stay consistent with the things that are going right, the more right things are going to come to you. And staying consistent, keeping on track during times of change is something that is really going to help you in business and in your property investing. So that that is something that... I don't care if you use your Google Calendar, if you have, I actually, oh my gosh, I'm looking here. I use the full focus. <laughs> I actually have my my full focus planner here. And I I love this full focus planner, but I, I actually write it down. I'm like looking for a day that I haven't written in, which I've written in every single day in this book. I just finished, but this is mine. And I do a written calendar. Here's my new one that I'm just taking out of the package. So every quarter you go ahead and you do each quarter is um, so many months of your planning. And I do that and use a block schedule method. That helps me to manage everything I do. How do you do a radio show and manage a large team of real estate agents and help all your clients? So I still do paper. I also do electronic and that really makes a difference. I hope that helps you as far as that goes. So I wanted to share a little glimpse into my world. Uh, again, I am your host and I have a lot of knowledge on finance as far as the real estate market goes. 
And my passion is really helping people. So I don't care if you are listening in and you are a first time home buyer and you want to figure out right now what to do to prepare to buy in the next six to 12 months. Now's the time to start. If you are just getting started in your business, there's the business credit route. If not, there's personal. And it's very important starting very young to watch your credit, learn how to fix your credit if that's what you need. I work with some great mortgage brokers who help people actually work ahead of things to correct, correct their credit and to prepare to qualify. Now, not everybody knows this, but if you are a new investor or you have a business, maybe you love to travel a lot, but you need a home base, you can actually invest in up to a four unit property and qualify as long as you live in one of the units for the first two years and depends on the state. So each state might be slightly different on that. You qualify to get that mortgage as a home loan, which is a lower interest rate. And guess what? Your income plus the income of those other, let's say you're going to live in one unit and you have four, the other three units qualify as part of the income that they consider giving you the mortgage loan on. So even if that unit, let's say maybe some of them are vacant or it's brand new, you can get a real estate agent to help you with the comps to see what the rental market will bear, how much people are paying for rents in your area and use that to qualify. Or usually you'll buy and there's tenants in place and it may be that um, you get into one of the units because they didn't they put the the tenants all on month to month. So you would ask for a, what's called an estoppel, which is basically a form. don't don't let the big words scare you. <laughs> but it's basically a legal form that each tenant needs to fill out to to verify, yes, I'm still in the lease. Yes, uh, I am still paying so much and my lease is for another six months, another year, two years, whatever it is. And so that is showing the bank or the mortgage company that you're going to get so much income each month for that property. Now, the other thing that you need to consider is you need to have money set aside, not only for down payment, and there you can still qualify for like low money, no money down, all these good things, because it's under a home loan if it's four units or less. And so don't worry too much about that. You can go as low as like 3%, sometimes zero, depending on your situation. But those other tenants, that income will qualify you. Now, when you get those rents, you're going to have to um, put aside money toward your property taxes, your insurance, and maintenance and repairs because you're going to have what's called a vacancy factor. So there's going to be times when you're going to have a vacancy or uh, the roof is going to need to be repaired or there's going to be a leak. Somebody needs a new air conditioning unit. So you need to have money set aside and at the very least some, some credit line or something set aside so you have access to funds to take care of your tenants properly. And so that's another huge thing that sometimes people don't do the math on that until after the fact. So that's a very important thing to consider. <coughs> Excuse me. And so when you're working with a real estate agent that has been an investor as well, they'll be able to guide you through those steps depending on what your goal is. Now, when I started out, I had that triplex. I went ahead. I finally did buy my dream home a beautiful home in La Cunada. and then later on, uh, Beverly Hills, and then um, more recently, uh, moving over to uh, Las Vegas area as a main home, and then having my vacation home now in California. And that's all, depending on where you are in your life and how you want to structure things, there's lots of tax savings to that. So, it, you know, going from that first triplex, I finally got into my my dream home and I had a couple of small starter homes in between and then rented those out <laughs> and continued. So, you know, you have to think back to a game of Monopoly and 
um, or other games that are similar, you know, so many rental properties and then you get a hotel. And in real estate, in today's real estate, not the board game, but in real life, what, what happens is you have so many pieces of smaller property, let's say, and then you want to sell. Well, gosh, you have to pay capital gains tax on your profit unless you do what's called a 1031 tax deferred exchange. And that's still, uh, knock on wood, uh, available for us now and hopefully will continue. It, it differs slightly state by state how that's done. But, but basically, the way you do that is, let's say you have a few properties and you want to sell them and get into a bigger property and not pay that capital gains. It's deferred until later. It could be way later in your life. It could be that your your generational wealth way down the line, somebody sells and pays. But for now, you don't pay that. That gives you more buying power. So I would exchange my smaller units that maybe required more maintenance and hands-on to something that's easier to run and maintain. And when I did that, you have to identify, you have to work with an accommodator or an attorney, depending on what state you're in. And, and I have done quite a few 1031 exchanges. It is a little nerve wracking because you do need to, even before you like sell and list your property, you want to look at the properties that you're considering to purchase you have so many days that you need to identify up to three properties. And then you have another like 120 days to close escrow. So it's it's all on a time clock. And the money from the sale of the one property, you can't touch that money. It has to go through escrow, um, through your company, over to the attorney or the accommodator, depending on your state, and then directly into your new purchase in order to defer that tax. So that's a huge, huge thing that if you don't have somebody that knows what they're doing to help you, you could end up paying a lot of tax and not getting what you want. So it's good to structure those deals and work with somebody that knows what they're doing in that. Now, I do work uh, primarily in California and not Nevada as a relocation specialist, but I also have a group of hand-picked agents that are on my team and that I work with and refer out to. So when you come to me, I actually continue with you throughout your entire process, even if I'm working with one of my hand-picked agents in another state, to make sure that we do the strategy session to figure out what's best for you and your circumstances during this time. And like I said, it can be very different depending on your situation and what you need and different part of your life. It may be that you're in a point where you need to live in California. You need to work with entertainment industry. Uh, and I'm, I'm hoping all goes well on that strike end soon for those that are in the industry, you know what I'm talking about there, but you know, you want, you may need to live close, um, to a studio or to whatever your work is. And there may be a different time in your life where you can just fly in for work and rent short term and move somewhere else where your taxes are far less cost of living is better. And so that's something that you need to look at where you're at in your life. What do you want for your family? If you have young children, you may want to be in a specific school district or have your children go to a special private school that you love. I've worked with tons of clients that will move just for the school, whatever school it is. And that's what they want for their children. They'll move their entire family and life because they want their children raised with a certain religious school or with a certain type of education and or a certain school district that they love, uh, award winning, and people will do that. And it's a great idea. That's something that is so individualized. It's really important to have a conversation. I'm happy to consult with you or call somebody that can help you with those kind of ideas because you'll be surprised what might look like your only option may be only one of many. 
And once you know how many options you have and the choices you have, even in our economy, in our changing market, that's going to that's gonna make a big difference. One of the most important things that I also wanted to discuss about navigating a shift in our economy, in our interest rates, uh, in the housing market and in investing and we can get into inflation, is our mindset. There's an importance with embracing change and cultivating a growth-oriented perspective. It makes you motivated, adaptable, and ready to change. Now, if you know the real estate market well, and you're, you're looking for property for profits, then you know any, any market is a good market as long as you buy right as long as you hunt right. And then it's location, location, location. And it may be you're in a point where you're buying and holding, or you may be getting ready to invest. This is, as always, the best time. So it's having that strategy, strategy session and deciding where you're at and what you want to do to put yourself and your family in the best possible lifestyle, home, or investment options that you can. It may be that you want to fund your career uh, in the entertainment industry or whatever industry you're in. I I think about Arnold Schwarzenegger and (laughs) he was into real estate and how he funded his dreams that way. So finding a semi-passive to passive way to invest, I have found the best thing is investing in properties And I do have a course, a mastermind group that meets and we talk about property for profits. I have experts come in and share and we help you individualize your plan that's going to serve you and your family the best and that also may help fuel your business to even more success. I do hope you connect with me and tune in next week to listen for more. We do have a continued series. So I will be continuing a collaboration with John C. Morley, and we will be continuing on during this time, helping you to have even more success, (laughs) abundance in all areas of your business, uh, your personal life, your career, and your family. So tune in each week right here. You can look at shows that have been recorded. If you might want to sit down and take notes, review things, you can go ahead uh, and go to Sheila Mack show on YouTube and every single show is recorded there. So you're welcome to go there to view for free. Next week, we will be back again with another great interview uh, where John and I will be discussing some more things to help you during this time and beyond. So I look forward to seeing you then. And if you are driving or listening in, you can find me, ask for Sheila Mack at Keller Williams Beverly Hills, or also you can call in to 310, area code 310-432-6400 and ask for Sheila Mack, or go ahead and connect with me with a contact form at SheilaMack.com, and I will be happy to help you. Again, I look forward to talking with you again next week and helping you with your real estate and investment needs. Stay tuned. You need a guide to show you how we get through a situation like this, to give you resources and to help you get out of the emotional pea soup fog of dealing with a crisis and the resulting fallout. I've been there and I'm here to help you. Have you lost your job? Have you lost a loved one? Are you exhausted caring for your parents, for your kids? Well, you can find immediate relief when you read Sheila Mack's new number one bestseller, Bootstraps and Bra Straps. It contains the Boots formula to move from rock bottom back into action in any situation, especially right now. So if life has knocked you down, pick yourself up with Bootstraps and Bra Straps. Get your copy at www. SheilaMack.com today. Next week, we will be back again with another great interview uh, where John and I will be discussing some more things to help you during this time and beyond. 
So I look forward to seeing you then. Tune in again right here on KCAA, the station that leaves no listener behind.